Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger, who was here tonight. I don't know where Pat is. Pat, there you go, Pat, stand up. Pat came to see me and he told me they're ready to increase their investment from 20 billion to 100 billion. That would be the biggest investment in manufacturing in American history. And all they're waiting for is for you to pass this bill. So let's not wait any longer. Send it to my desk, I'll sign it. And we'll really take off in a big way. Okay, so that is Joe Biden at the State of the Union encouraging Congress to pass the CHIPS Act, which will surely be coming soon because they do so much passing of legislation these days. <laughs> anyway, the intent of the bill, as you might have gotten from the accolades given to these tech CEOs, is to provide a great deal of subsidies, $52 billion to companies that manufacture microchips to get them to build manufacturing facilities here in the US. There are Senate and House versions of this bill that have some differences that have already passed that need to be reconciled at this point. Um, but we are talking about a lot of money that's gonna go out the door. And you might already be starting to worry whenever the government does get around to paying a bunch of uh, sending out a bunch of money that there might be a few issues and some have been identified. And I wanna um, give credit to uh, David Sroda as well as Extreme Tech for some of their reporting here. But uh, Intel has a mega fab facility, two different manufacturing facilities that they're gonna be building, estimated to cost initially $20 billion, but that could swell to over um, 100 billion. And so we're talking about huge investments here. Mm -hmm. And the stakes are high because we're currently experiencing a shortage of, uh, of microchips that's uh, influencing a lot of different industries. The issue is that this money is gonna go out the door and then there are not proper controls on what exactly is going to happen with the money. So to sort of quickly bottom line it, Bernie Sanders had introduced an amendment to stop companies from using this money for some of the things they generally do with tax cuts, including stock buybacks. He, in his amendment, companies receiving funding would have had to agree to certain requirements, not to buy back their own stocks, not to outsource American manufacturing jobs overseas, not to repeal existing collective bargaining agreements, and to remain neutral in any union organizing effort. And that would have been awesome. So of course they killed it. Yeah. And uh, there's a new weaker version that's being promoted uh, by AOC and Cori Bush that they might be able to weasel out of. But we're, there's a lot that we're talking about here. Um, starting with you, Ramesh, what do you make of all this? I mean, look, during this, this pandemic, uh, we've seen a doubling of wealth amongst the 10 wealthiest Americans and also the 10 wealthiest, I think approximately 10 wealthiest people in the world several of whom are American. Now that might be sort of like, oh wow, what does that have to do with this? Do you know what percentage of them are um, connected to technology? About 70, 80% or so, depending on where you look. Why is that the case? Because we've all been technologically reliant over the last couple of years and we're likely to be more, you know, moving further into the future, not just because of the possibility of heaven forbid other pandemics, or climate related uh, disasters, but just because of the way things have shifted. Things are getting more intimate, more connected. Uh, heaven forbid if we have Neuralink chipped up to our brains oh, and God. we're just kind of on these privatized gated metaverse platforms all of the time. But that's where we're heading. And uh, that is a gro there's a gross amount of inequality associated with who controls the drawstrings of technology. And you know we've talked about this, John. I've talked about it with you, Anna. I've talked about it with Jenk. I've talked about everybody who will talk with me about it. Um, technology is not about technology anymore. Technology is about everything, right? The biggest taxi company in the history of the world is a technology company, Uber, mm -hmm. right? That was not profitable yet worth hundreds of billions of dollars until recently, for a reason, because of the acquisition of intimate data and the power that that offers. So now, why does this matter for any so-called rhetorically progressive policy like let's invest in America, let's create jobs in America, and so on? That sounds great, which we saw in the State of the Union speech. Let's look at the reality. Is the reality an actual investment in America? Is the reality an actual investment in workers? Is the reality an actual investment in infrastructures that support collective bargaining, you know, climate res climate resilience, and all of this? No, in reality, these things all get chopped out right from under us because the devil's in the details. Remember, Biden said nothing will fundamentally change, and this is a great example of exactly such. I have more I can say about this. You know, mm -hmm. I, you but you all know I'm going to go off on this. <laughs> um, and and <laughs> thank you, Aishwarya, for putting this story on. Um, but I'll I'll shut up now and and continue when you when you want me to. Uh, Anna. 
Yeah, I mean, what I'll say is uh, oftentimes we will hear all of these like grandiose statements in regard to like what the objective is with all these policies and these bailouts. And when you hear about a large sum of money going to any particular industry or to let's say Wall Street, um, you can't help but think about what uh, happened with the bailouts that were provided to Wall Street following the economic collapse. Uh, one of the first stories that came out of that was that the very executives that helped lead the way to economic collapse received massive bonuses. And it really makes you question, you know, how is it that a CEO for one of these banks that needed a bailout somehow had millions of dollars to hand over to the very executive that you know spearheaded the destruction of our economy? So really, I'm at this point, I'm less interested in hearing what the bold objective is. I'm more interested in hearing what the controls are. What are the enforcement mechanisms to ensure that this taxpayer money is being utilized in the the way that it is um, you know, supposed to be utilized for. And uh, so far from what we've seen, uh, there isn't much of an enforcement mechanism. And I'm worried about just handing a, a, a check uh, to these uh, tech companies so they can do stock buybacks or other um, pretty disgusting things with our money. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it is obvious when we're talking about giving so much money, we in theory could exercise all sorts of controls over how it would be used. We're the ones with the tens of billions of dollars. The issue is that it's it's the a tale as old as time in American politics. They their industry spends a bunch of money on lobbyists, which encouraged the politicians to put in pro industry like like to bias it in favor of the industry to not. Do the regulations. They take those talking points, they combine it with campaign donations. But even if they didn't have that, many of the representatives are thinking, my, my, wouldn't it be nice to be a lobbyist for this industry someday? The whole thing is so disgustingly financially incestuous. Um, but uh, Ramesh, I did want to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see in the corner of my eye, Ramesh is like, Come I'm, on, I'm like, I'm like, I'm licking my lips <laughs> okay, and like chomping at the bit in every way I can. So, I mean, all of this relates to the privatization of public life, which is really the big story, right? That we've seen in this country and with with the passage of neoliberal policies all around the world. Everything public has been privatized in this case by various sorts of digital systems. Um, what is a progressive vision for a digital future, a digital economy that supports people and planet? What does that look like? Why is that not even part of this? And let me just also remind us all, I know I've seen the Young Turks cover this for months, You know, while I was sitting on my couch watching you all. <laughs> uh, what happened to Build Back Better? Like what happened to that? I know we heard of a few policies. What is his mode of implementing an actual vision for workers and the middle and working classes of this country? It's not there. It's not there. Yeah. It's dead. It's dead. Uh, build. I don't, even, I don't even want to hear that phrase uh, during this administration. <laughs> it's no, no, no. I don't mean that to you. I mean um, <laughs> from any Democrat who's still pretending like that legislation is going to go anywhere. And look, Biden is urging Congress to do something. So already, even with the facade of of helping, um, you know, bring manufacturing jobs to the United States, I just want you guys to be super skeptical of him calling for Congress to do anything. It's one thing to argue that Congress should pass legislation that you've um, you've been pushing for, but. Really, have you been pushing for it? Are you willing to implement not just carrots, but sticks in ensuring that your policy gets passed? And he's unwilling to do that. So really, I mean, this is a fun conversation, but it's really just a conversation. It's in the abstract, is anything gonna pass? And look, yeah. there's a possibility that this legislation could pass as long as it helps the tech donors who fund the campaigns of these politicians. But that would mean that any enforcement mechanism would be stripped out of it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.